This is Dr. Sad in front of you and today my topic is the acute liver failure. So as its name is indicating acute liver failure. Acute liver failure means that the rapid, severe, progressive impairment of the liver function. Clear? In a normal individual, in those individuals who is having the normal liver. So basically what is acute liver failure? It is basically the rapid, progressive impairment of the liver function in the previously normal individual in those individual who is having a previously normal liver clear so this is the acute liver failure now basically what are the causes of acute liver failure means why this acute liver failure is occurring so first of all we are going to discuss the causes of acute liver failure so one of the most common cause most common cause of acute liver failure is the acute viral hepatitis this is the one of the most common cause in the worldwide clear and the most common cause in the uk is basically most common cause in uk is the paracetamol poisoning paracetamol poisoning this is the worldwide most common cause means the viral acute viral hepatitis is the worldwide most common cause of the uh, acute liver failure now the second cause second we have the or you can say the third one that is the drugs drugs first of all we have the paracetamol that is the acetaminophen then we have the rifampicin is also isoniazid so there are many drugs that can affect in the liver that can cause the acute liver failure when they are taken in a very high dose means those uh, sometimes what happens that this uh, paracetamol is basically available uh, especially in pakistan it is available in every house because in in the rich as well as in the poor houses this paracetamol is available so what happens that if someone uh, means wants to do the suicide and he he does not find anything so he just uh, take many tablets of the paracetamol for the suicide purpose so in that case it can lead to the acute liver failure because the high dose of this paracetamol can lead to the acute liver failure in the same way the isoniazid rifampicin and other, other drugs that can cause the liver damage clear so these are the drugs then we have the toxins what are those toxins example is the mushrooms same if those if the mushrooms they are taken in a very high quantity so that can also lead to the acute liver failure then we have the miscellaneous causes miscellaneous causes what are those that is the cryptogenic cryptogenic liver failure means that is called as the non a e viral hepatitis so this is basically cryptogenic means idiopathic cause cryptogenic means idiopathic cause then we have the rai syndrome in the miscellaneous causes we have the help syndrome in gynae we have studied help syndrome so these are the miscellaneous causes of the acute liver failure understand so acute liver failure most common causes the acute viral hepatitis in the uk it is the paracetamol poisoning uh, no need to remember this uk but it's very important to remember worldwide most common cause then we have the drugs that can also lead to the acute liver failure toxins and the miscellaneous uh, miscellaneous causes like the cryptogenic and rai syndrome and health syndrome so uh, these are the causes now we are moving on towards the clinical features so what are the basically clinical features how you are gonna diagnose this acute liver failure so clinical features basically clinical features 
initial or you can say uh, common clinical feature like the nausea vomiting may be there jaundice may also be there but the cardinal feature we are talking about here the cardinal feature cardinal feature is basically hepatic encephalopathy means if the hepatic encephalopathy is present it means that it will be uh, pointing you towards the acute liver failure now what is this hepatic encephalopathy we will be discussing it detail in our uh, upcoming lectures uh, because we will be discussing hepatic encephalopathy separately but here I am giving you a brief introduction that what happens that whenever there is a liver failure simply you can say this is liver failure the function of the liver is lost so the toxin substances the toxic substances like the ammonia they are not detoxified because the function of the liver is to detoxify the toxins when these toxins like the ammonia and the other substances when they are not detoxified so they start to accumulate in the liver just um, remember it from the diagram it would be easy for you see this is the liver and here you know that the uh, certain substances the toxic substances they are detoxified in the liver when those substances are not detoxified so what happens that like ammonia they start to accumulate in your blood and obviously the blood is circulating all over so this blood is also going towards the brain also for suppose this is your brain clear so here your blood supply is also going to the brain so what happens that this ammonia starts to accumulate in the brain and this is causing the impairment of the cns functions means the patient will be start uh, losing his consciousness he, he, it may also lead to the coma if it is untreated so this ammonia when it starts to accumulate in the cns can lead to the cns impairment clear now so this is the hepatic encephalopathy that, that is the cardinal feature and why this develop i told you the whole mechanism then uh, it can all hepatic encephalopathy cns dysfunction there is a sign that is called as the st rexis what is asterixis? Asterixis is basically, you can say it denotes the CNS dysfunction. Now how this you can, uh, how you will see this, the, this in the patient? Simply you will ask the patient to uh, straighten his hand and you will, uh, you will do like this and you will do like this. Means pull his hand backward and leave it. So if the patient will be having the CNS dysfunction due to the hepatic failure, the patient will be doing like this, flapping these are called as the flapping tremors asterixis these are called as the flapping tremors clear so this is basically due to the hepatic encephalopathy now then we also develop cerebral edema cerebral edema means causes the increased intracranial pressure increased intracranial pressure uh, results in the you can say cushing triad or cushing reflex what is this triad basically it consists of three things number one is the bradycardia number second is the hypertension and number third is the irregular respirate respiration clear so these are the basically three signs that you will see in the patient with the increased intracranial pressure so in this case also the cerebral edema develops there is the increased intracranial pressure and that will be resulting in the bradycardia hypertension and the uh, irregular respiratory rate in the patient so this is the cushing triad or you can say cushing reflex Clear? So these are the neurological manifestations of the acute liver failure while the other manifestations like the CVS manifestations also occur like the renal failure, renal manifestations may also occur, pulmonary manifestations may also occur. So it uh, means the DIC coagulopathy may also occur because the liver, uh, liver is responsible for these all functions. Obviously uh, why the coagulopathy is occurring because the liver is uh, help uh, helps in the formation of the clotting factors and when those clotting factors they are not formed it will be leading to obviously coagulopathy dic clear so 
these are the clinical features and one thing here i have to tell you that in this case in the acute liver failure initially initially liver enlarges but later liver shrinks now remember this thing that initially in this case the liver enlarges but later on the uh, liver shrinks now i would like to explain you or i would like to clear the concept of this uh, right now clear okay now what does this means see i wrote here initially liver enlarges first thing i will explain this see this is the liver for example initially why it is enlarging because initially what happens that there is inflammation inflammatory substances cells all these are present and they cause the inflammation of the liver so that's why the liver enlarges initially but what happens after when the time passes what happens that the liver parenchyma this is that parenchyma is not damaged initially but later on when the parenchyma is starts to damage when this parenchyma starts to damage so the liver size obviously will be shrinking clear when the parenchyma is damaged the liver size is shrink now see this uh, normally normally this was the liver clear normally this was the liver and this was inflamed so obviously we all know that the amino transferases amino transferases like the uh, we have the ast and the alt alanine transaminase and the aspartate transaminase they are increased clear because the parenchyma the hepatocytes they are not damaged clear but here see this portion is damaged this portion is damaged this portion is destroyed so hepatocytes are also destroyed so in this case what happens that the amino transferases they are decreased in this case when the parenchyma of the liver is destroyed the amino transferases they are decreased why they are decreased because the hepatocyte the parenchyma of the liver is destroyed so they will not be producing the amino transferases anymore so this portion will produce amino transferase so the comparing to this por the whole liver and this portion the amino transferases will be decreased as compared to this one because here the inflammation is there here the destruction is there of the parenchyma so decrease when uh, later on initially what happens initially liver enlarges and the amino transferases amino transferases they are obviously increased we all know but later on when the liver shrinks the amino transferases they are decreased so these this amino transferases decrease in the this decrease in the amino transferases is does not indicate that the patient's condition is improving no it rather it indicates that the patient is uh, uh, worsening the condition is worsening and how you will confirm this you will confirm this when the patient's jaundice patient's coagulopathy patient's encephalopathy is worsening when these three things they are worsening and the amino transferases are decreased then you will con we consider it as the patient is now in the worsening condition now he is worsening towards uh, the more severe condition he is moving towards more severe condition clear but if the amino transferases if they are decreased and the other things all are normal then you can consider that the patient is improving but here point was that this amino transferase is decreased and the patient is worsening why because the jaundice and other substances other things they are um, worsening and why this amino transferase is decreased i told you the reason here due to the destruction of the parenchyma so this point i have to clear that why the initially liver enlarges and why amino transferases increase initially why later on the liver shrinks and why amino transferases is decreased later on so is this concept now clear now so this is uh, uh, the initially liver enlarges and the um, later on it shrinks now uh, we have classified the acute liver failure on the basis of the time from the jaundice to the hepatic encephalopathy so we will first now study the classification classification of the acute liver failure we have basically classified into the three types now for suppose the patient has developed jaundice on 5th 
of the male for example clear and now uh, the hepatic encephalopathy the patient develops hepatic encephalopathy within seven days after the jaundice appearance clear for example fifth may sixth seventh eighth ninth tenth eleventh twelfth so on 5th to 12th, 12th May, this is about 7 day period. Within this 7 days period, if the patient develops uh, hepatic encephalopathy, means this was the date the patient was diagnosed with the jaundice and now he has developed the hepatic encephalopathy, the time duration between these two are 7 days or less, then it is classified as the hyperacute. Clear? This is called as the hyperacute. Means the time duration from the jaundice to the hepatic encephalopathy is seven days or less. It is called as the hyperacute, and this most commonly occur in the viral causes and in paracetamol poisoning. Means if this occur in within the seven days, then you will consider it as the viral hepatitis or paracetamol poisoning. Clear? Now the second case is if the time duration between jaundice and hepatic encephalopathy is 8 days to 28 days. So it means now this is called as the acute liver failure and this is basically cryptogenic or drug induced. Clear? Uh, these both are common. Then we have the uncommon condition that is called as the subacute. Subacute means from 29 days to 12 weeks. Means the time duration between the jaundice and the hepatic encephalopathy is about from 29 days to 12 weeks. Then it is considered as the subacute acute, sub -acute uh, liver failure. And this is also due to the cryptogenic causes or the drug induced. Clear? So this is the basically classification of the acute liver failure on the basis of the time duration between the jaundice and the hepatic encephalopathy. Now the last thing we are going to discuss is the complications. Complications are very easy. Simple is that first of all we have the hepatic encephalopathy itself is a complication. Clear? Then we have the hypoglycemia patient may develop hypoglycemia why because the glucose metabolism obviously it is occurring in the liver so in the severe cases patient may develop in the hypoglycemia severe hypoglycemia then there may be metabolic acidosis in the patient there may be renal failure obviously we will study detail about the hepatorenal syndrome in detail obviously it will be affecting the pulmonary function also renal functions also Coagulopathy may also develop. So these are all the complications of the acute liver failure. In the next lecture, we will be discussing the detail about the management and the prognostic, poor prognostic factor of the acute liver failure. So this was all about the brief introduction about the acute liver failure. If you have any query, any confusion, you can ask in the comment section. Thank you so much. Allah Hafiz.